Welcome to this daily devotion for Monday, September 21st. I'm Pastor Mark, one of the pastors of the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and I welcome you into this time and into this week of devotion where we try to grow a little together in love of God and love of neighbor. Our theme this week is God supplies our every need. I think that's a very good theme given everything going on in our world. So would you join me? in the invocation, uh, just focusing and realizing that God is with us in this time and place. Almighty God, in whom I find life, health, and strength, and through whom's mercy I am clothed and fed, grant unto me a thankful and faithful heart, the name and spirit of Christ. Amen. Our weekly psalm this week is Psalm 86. Now today I'm just going to read Psalm 86 for you. And uh, I just want you to, as you hear it, to maybe lock on to a word or a phrase that speaks to you and uh, just write that down or or just keep track of that uh, so that you might see where God is speaking to you as we reread this this week. Psalm 86, a prayer of David. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call on you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever, for great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. The arrogant are attacking me, O God. A band of ruthless men seek my life, men without regard for you. But you, O Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me. And have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant. And save the son of your maidservant. Give me a sign of your goodness. That my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. May God bless the reading of the psalm today. Was there a a word or a phrase or a passage that really stuck out? Reread that later today if you want. There might be something God is saying to you. Our other scripture reading today comes from the first chapter or the first part of Kings. The first book is what I was trying to say. 1 Kings chapter 17, 1 Kings 17. This is a story about Elijah and the entire chapter really talks about God supplying our every need. Now Elijah, the Tishbite from Tishb in Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will not neither be dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here, turn eastward and hide in the Kareth ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord told him. He went to the Kareth Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. 
May the Lord bless our reading of Scripture today. And if you have time today, keep reading in uh, 1 Kings 17 because Elijah has some other stories talking about God's goodness, God's providence, the ability God seems to have to love and provide for God's children. But here in this wonderful little passage, as Elijah proclaims that there's going to be a drought for several years, he goes out and God says, don't worry about food. Don't worry about what you need. I will provide. And the scripture says that God provided ravens feed Elijah bread. Uh, and there are many stories like this in the Old Testament of God providing food from seemingly nowhere or using the world around the people to provide for them in a way that they could not provide for themselves. And how much more, I wonder, is God willing to provide for us? Um, we, you know, I, I'm, I'm the number one guilty person of it when it comes to saving, planning, thinking ahead, got to take care of ourself, got to take care of our family, got to take care of our future. But at the end of the day, when I've had almost nothing, God provided. When I've had a lot, God provided and offered me an opportunity to provide for others. And I've never been without. Even, I, I tell the story often, you know, when Jennifer and I got married, I, I was working as a pastor, getting minimum salary, but still a decent salary as a young person. Jennifer was working as a third shift intensive care nurse. She was making a lot more than I was. We together, when we got married, had a sizable income, or especially for where we lived and people in our area. And then we got married and started working with our uh, foster children, which we've since adopted. And Jennifer had to take less time at work and eventually stopped working to take care of the kids. And I was pretty much making the same amount uh, those many years later as we were starting a new church. And, uh, you know, they, they could not uh, afford that much more. And so we went from a, a fairly large salary lifestyle of the two of us to a family of five with my salary only. And we survived. And, and not only did we survive, we thrived. And it was amazing. I could tell you time after time after time of how God provided when we really needed it. And more than that, God provided for our hearts and our well-being, our very soul. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. But believing that God will provide is a powerful part of our faith. I have a story that I, I think you'll like. It's from I Will Lift Up My Eyes by Glenn Clark, and he's telling a story of uh, another person telling a story, but you'll get it. Norman Harrison, in his, his In a Life of Prayer, that's the name of the work, tells how Charles Inglis, I said somebody's telling a story of somebody telling the story, Charles Inglis, while making the voyage to America a number of years ago, learned from the devout and godly captain of an experience which he had but recently with George Mueller of Bristol. It seems that they had encountered a very dense fog. Because of it, the captain had remained on the bridge continuously for 24 hours when Mr. Mueller came to him and said, Captain, I have come to tell you that I must be in Quebec on Saturday afternoon. When informed that that was impossible, George replied, Very well. If the ship cannot take me, God will find some other way. I have never broken an engagement for 57 years. Let us go down to the chart room and pray. The captain continues the story thus. I looked at this man of God and thought to myself, what lunatic asylum could that man have come from? I have never heard such a thing as this. Mr. Mueller, I said, do you know how dense this fog is? Mueller replied, no. My eye is not on the density of the fog, but on the living God who controls every circumstance in my life. 
He knelt down and prayed one of those simple prayers. And when he had finished, I was going to pray, but he put his hand on my shoulder and he told me not to pray. Firstly, he said, because you do not believe God will. And secondly, because I believe God has and there is no need for whatever you would pray about. I looked at him and George Bueller said, Captain, I've known my Lord for 57 years and there has never been a single day that I failed to get an audience with the king. Get up, open the door, and you will find that the fog has gone. I got up, and the fog was indeed gone. George Mueller was in Quebec Saturday afternoon for his engagement. I'm sure you've heard stories like that before, and I thought that was a cute story for today. But do you, do you have that kind of faith, that, that kind of faith that can move mountains, that can part waters, that can make ways available that were previously blocked? Or that kind of hope? Or just that kind of dependence? I think at the end of the day, that's, that's what's a stumbling block for me sometimes. It's being utterly dependent. Uh, there's a song, Surrender. I surrender all. I mean, that's the song. But we struggle to surrender all of our lives, our time, our talents, our treasures, and our very selves to the will of God. But when we do, we often find that we in our fervor to provide for ourselves and our families and maybe even for good causes, our church, missions, charity, our fellow humans, our world. We make it about us, not about God. Something to think about this week. Today, let's pray for the needs of many. There are many who are in need in need of food, in need of shelter, in need of a job, in need of a family, in need of God's love, our love. Let's pray for them. You just join me in attitude of prayer, however best puts you in a position to be close to God. Lord, we need you every hour. And we also are called to surrender our whole life to you. Allow us to work towards that each day that we may grow in your love and allow us to believe that you will provide no matter what circumstances in our lives. We pray for those who are truly needy. We ask that you allow us to help as much as we can. But more than anything, share your good news, the good news of your love, the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. And so let us pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, until tomorrow, hear the benediction. You have been in communion with your Lord. Go forth now in strength and assurance that the Lord Jesus Christ goes with you. Until tomorrow, friends. Bye.